Hi everyone, my name is Ailey Ross and um, I work with Life Itself and welcome to this third episode of our Exploring Social Transformation series of the Life Itself podcast. Um, today I'm really excited to be joined by Valerie Duvochelle. Valerie is a pioneer at Life Itself. She is a firm believer in helping communities awaken their enthusiastic collective heart through shared daily practices. Um, Valerie will be facilitating our upcoming open residency taking place at the Bergerac Hub and we'll get into that a wee bit today. Uh, but yeah, that's a very brief introduction to Valerie. So I will let her jump in and maybe introduce herself in a wee bit more detail. It's lovely to have you here today, Valerie. Tell us a bit about yourself. Hi, Heli. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Valerie. I'm French and I am a pioneer of life itself. And um, I'm exploring uh, more particularly uh, daily ordinary uh, activities and more even particularly uh, all the practice around uh, cooking and eating. Yeah, great. If you've ever come to a Life Itself residency or you ever plan on, we, Valerie is definitely a asset in many, many ways to life itself. But yes, your passion around food and how food is so central to community is really great in many ways, but also in the practical ways in that you, the food is really great. <laughs> so yeah, I know that we love having Valerie on board for many reasons the food being one of them. Um, yeah, but speaking of residency, we've got an open residency coming up. Um, maybe you want to give a wee introduction into what the open residency is going to be and also how that fits in with Life Itself's interest in exploring social transformation. So well, actually, I'm very excited to host the uh, open house residency. Um, because I would say like we will focus and um, what is a good life, you know, what is a good community life and um, to uh, put that in frame of your question in the general social transformation, I would say that it's um, interesting for us to uh, re-explore the notion of good, which is often tied up with uh, our personal choice, what I want, my opinion, me, my space. So um, to um, question, to experience a good life in a community, it means also that you might um, um, both bump up what is not your first choice, you know, like basically when you want to clean your house, you decide when you clean your house. When you want to eat, you decide when you want to eat. So there is kind of an adjustment, which where is the transformation in my sense is, is appearing. There is many ways, but it happens also there where you have basically to, okay, this is time for cooking. I had other things to do. I'm going, I'm going to do it. And I will basically... Uh, come to um, be in a movement, not just with myself and the world, uh, but just with other human beings. And I will, I will, I will uh, be already in a in a commune movement. And this also, I, I believe, is transformative. However, sometimes in residency there is kind of an objective, even if the main objective is definitely how to relearn to live together and to see how much that just by living together and with collective practices different could be different uh, in, in, in with different residencies actually makes us think differently. So with this one, it's summer, so it's more a light vibe. So mm -hmm. we will call, we will do what I call the MVP, the minimum viable practices, which actually um, sustains uh, our um, uh, feeling to be uh, uh, together uh, and not just uh, co-sharing uh, uh, co the, the, the house, uh, but at a, at a, at a minimum, minimum rate enough to activate ourselves in this uh, community self. Uh, so basically, what does it mean? It means like one hour and 30 minutes um, uh, of uh, cleaning, cooking, what's need to be done in the house, with also, it's part of it, having the 
the, the joy, you know, to, to contribute not only for yourself, not only for your time being, but also sometimes, you know, when we repair, we, we know that it's also a contribution for the people after. And it's also part of feeling together, you know, of all the people who will go through. And also um, a sitting or uh, it could change, we'll see, but, but this one, we, usually we can change the kind of meditation, but let's say a contemplative space uh, every morning. Not too early, you know, eight. And, and then if people want to have their yoga before running, um, they can. And uh, the, the, this time the contemplative space will be mostly simple sitting, just sitting. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, that sounds really exciting. I'd love to know, because you said your instinct might be but I want to clean my house at this time but when we live together it's got to be more structured and think about other people so we're going to do it for an hour at this time together what is it about this communal way of living this collective way of living that you think is really sort of important to social transformation like why can't we all just sort of carry on living on our own, doing our own thing. Why are you so passionate about this collective living aspect of social transformation? Yeah, good question, because it goes to the core, I guess, of our um, um, collapse. Uh, um, I believe we have built a culture which is based on individualism. Mm -hmm. And from um, this uh, postulate, of uh, we have to be the one to um, um, create our happiness. And uh, that, uh, you know, has to come from uh, my own choice and, and my freedom to, to, to have the life that I want. Um, and there is a good thing of that. It's the realm of social rights, you know, like all the, uh, you know, and talking just with women, you know, like we, we needed to have a high I'm a woman and I need to do what it's needed to, to be done in order to have uh, more rights. So it doesn't say that it's bad individualism. Is, however, uh, we're living in a system and, and when it's um, too much, actually every system carry its uh, end of the loop <laughs> uh, in itself. If, if, if we don't uh, refresh or if it's not balanced by, uh, I guess, uh, the, the other polarities and the other uh, polarities being that, well, maybe happiness, maybe harmony, doesn't come only from our own choice and maybe the situation that we're in it's just the confrontation and the and the conflict of a different opinion which are all, are all coming from an i so uh, and and when we are opening spaces where um, we uh, are not coming uh, in the space totally from our own choice. It's our own intention. So we, of course, we're still free in our decision to move there or to move there. But let's say when we have the individual in, in intuition, I would say as much as intention to get in space of um, uh, not knowing because not in control of what we will do, even if, you know, in a kitchen, if there is a, a, a tenzo, a, a cook, like you're not the one to decide what you want to eat. Maybe you want to eat something else. Maybe you wouldn't want to cook something else. No, you, but you, you have the intention to step in um, a receptive space that a lot of interaction will start to happen. You know, we could see that as a as kind of a, vibration wave like you you let that happen you you, you you're not uh refraining them from 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 happening i guess and and if you st that and i guess that's where the, the the possible transformation is and before transformation i would say the possible experiment that when we're stepping in those collective space of not my own choice something is happening we 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 interact differently maybe we we, we, we see people differently. We also become more vulnerable 
You know, like there is a lot happening in kitchen, a lot of uh, sometimes reactivities, a lot of all, but all is um, kind of um, revealed in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted to say good and bad because I'm, I'm myself conditioning. So, but anyway, but basically um, the, the no always personal choice is definitely a, a, a postulate to um, a step in another culture, which is based in another uh, a consideration that self will create harmony, that oneself, I mean, personal self, will create happiness that, you know, uh, even my own happiness on, on, on the contrary. The other um, transformation, um, which happen uh, or we, that we want to activate here is also com com coming from a second um, second ingredients, I would say, which is the time. You know, we, we, we try to ask people to come for uh, one week, definitely minimum, two weeks, three weeks, one month. Mo most of the residency are for one month. Uh, to really feel the what what I just uh, uh, spoke. For example, the vulnerability part or the uh, reactivity part are usually not coming from the first week where we're all mm -hmm. like, wow, pink cloud. And, and it's good, you know, we need that. We need this juice. But it's also interesting to... Uh, to, to sit down, I would say, in the trouble and to, to, to realize at one point that the trouble with the outside in the world, we, we will be able to connect more when we also mirror the trouble inside. And also from that, the, the, the joyfulness of, um, uh, we don't say finding solution, but um, yeah, like moving together in a different way, which um, um, take us out from, from the trouble and coming back and going away. I okay. can, we can definitely deepen that, but I will let you. Yeah, we can maybe look back around to this. Um, so in the context of the residencies that Life Itself does, and in particular the open residency, residency that's coming up, you sort of started to talk a wee bit about how that looks in practice, what the collective practices are. Would you maybe want to run us through an average day at a residency, maybe using the open residency as an example, just so listeners or people watching can get an idea of what a day in the life at the Bergerac Hub is like? Yeah. Um, um, so anyway, for, for uh, to answer your, your question, and all the residencies are, are based on this frame, and however, uh, it, it, it is to the facilitators to, uh, to, of the different residency to have the flexibility and the creativity with the, the group uh, most of the time uh, uh, to, to adapt them. So for example, there is uh, uh, four kind of uh, practices. There is the contemplative uh, practice, uh, which is usually in the morning. And uh, for example, I was saying, Myself, it's Zazen, but uh, last uh, residency in Eco Spiritual, it was um, uh, walking meditation and singing, and it can be something else, and it can be a mix of, of, of a lot, but definitely there is a contemplative um, uh, practice. Then there is the cooking uh, practice where, you know, the, uh, we, we took turn um, uh, about the cooking through a frame. Maybe we will, uh, we can go. Uh, uh, more in detail uh, later, uh, uh, where we try to uh, cook, but in the awareness that we don't want all our, all our time to be spent on, on cooking. So trying as much as possible, uh, very simple, and, and, and I use a specific friend, I proposed a specific friend uh, that then temples are using, which is very basic and very, very simple, and that can be done in a relatively uh, quick way. And we have the cleaning, uh, the cleaning practice, usually we do them at the, at the same time, there is people who clean while some people are cooking regarding, you know, what, what they feel. And there is uh, all, I would say, the relationship uh, practices, you know, like, again, it depends, but uh, definitely we need tools to, uh, to be comfortable with our vulnerability. This is also part, definitely, of the transformational uh, change, of course, that, you know, to be able, without fear, to share 
uh, whatever we feel and, you know, to be seen and to uh, create the space that we see the others and then being seen. So there's also those those practices. So circle, again, it depends of the uh, facilitators, but it can be, you know, deep listening circle, nonviolent communication and um, and all the tools when there is, you know, tension happening to basically um, process sometimes uh, fantastic things, sometimes more difficult things, but in a group, they're not always at the same time for people. So to uh, benevolently, benevolently mm -hmm. going through and really in, um, uh, yeah, in, in humility, I would say, like all those practices are just for us to also deconstruct our ourselves. And it's, um, it's exciting because it's uh, allows us to step in a different uh, area, you know, outside in the community, but within ourselves. But it's, uh, sometimes it's an adventure. And uh, yeah. yeah, it really is. So um, I joined life itself at the start of the year and I came out to Bergerac and I attended a gathering and one of our residencies is the making eco spirituality accessible residency so as someone who's quite new to this space it was fascinating to jump in and I can really see obviously understand what it is that we're doing and because I've sort of like lived the experience and I've tried out these practices without any experience of it before and I've lived there for a month and you do see why it's really great to do it for like a month to do it for a significant amount of time and to get involved with these practices whether it's the food practices or just really engaging with everyone else in the community relating to everyone else but at least in the UK where I'm from maybe in France is very different from the way that people are living and I really enjoyed it it was really great um, I'm currently back in Scotland, but I'm itching to get back to, back out to France at some point. Um, it's a really, really great way of living. And I think the practices that have been incorporated into the Bergerac um, hub have come from other people's experiences of learning and lifelong learning and the way that they have found happiness and connection with others. So do you maybe want to speak to a bit how you have come to bring in, for example, your food practices? You've got a lot of experience working with food in temples. Do you want to maybe tell us a wee bit about your story and how you've come, <clears throat> how you've come to life itself? I know that that's a very big open ended question, but maybe just a little insight into your journey in reaching where you are now with your sort of interest and passion in social transformation. And yeah, yeah feel free to take yeah. your time if you want to have okay, a Okay, no, no, <laughs> I, will, I will jump because, uh, yeah, I mean, of course I won't say all because the problem is when we're aging, we have more and more <laughs> things to say. So, okay, I will try to stay focused. And I would say I started with the, um, the core of how our culture has been um, developed, and I would say even since the Greek, but I'm not, I'm not an historian, uh, and the um, sense of individualism that now had become a problem. Um, I was like that, you know, it was my freedom, you know, you don't want what I want, you know, I will do it anyway, me, me, me. That I, I had the sense of freedom attached to to whatever the fuck I want to do it, I will do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason that it would be too long to explain, I find myself in Zen temple, not, not even knowing what was Buddhism about, mm -hmm. uh, but I was just attracted. I came to visit once with a friend and I, and I, got, I, I got shocked by the liveness of the uh, monk uh, walking, it was in Sojiji in Japan, like long corridor, and I felt like I, I was in a village of dancer, you know, like dancer are like really, uh, you know, really in life, like going through life, like we feel like they're, they're really, you know, crossing from the inside life, and, and also the people in the garden, and like shine, uh, shine, like really clear eyes, you know, when you were um, crossing somebody's eyes, like straight in you. And I was like, wow, you know, and like, 
when I, I, I went, you know, I was partying, I was uh, a lot uh, in my youth, and I guess I was always looking that kind of strengthness, you know, like you got sometimes paradoxically when you're drinking too much, you're like, yeah, you know, like, so it, it, it's in some way, I was like, oh, those guys got, you know, a freedom that I've been looking this way. And anyway, I decided to do the first retreat, and it was so difficult because you know you don't have a choice so you wake up at uh, sometime uh, 3 30 4 30 da, 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 and all day long you know you are taken in the collective rhythm and um well something happened you know the fourth day of my first uh retreat um i i remember i i went out in the garden it was after the first uh, two session of zazen at uh, six and the garden has been transformed uh during the night like the color became like 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 the eyes of the monk you know everything like was really uh colorful and uh it was like whoa like you know, the twilight zone or something like that and then i had my my after the lunch and the rice, like I, I had something with the rice where actually I literally, because, you know, we have the, we said some sutra of the meal, uh, there is chanting. And then at one point you, 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 you raise your, your bowl and you say something. And at this moment I had something, I, I didn't know who was looking at who. I, I, it was really, whoa, it was really weird. And like a rush of love, bro. And then I tasted the rice and the rice was the most delicious things I have ever tested. And I've been four days before and it was, you know, same white rice. And the, the rice had a specific taste and I couldn't find it. I couldn't, I know this taste, I know this taste, I know this taste. And actually I found it, it was the, taste uh, which doesn't exist actually of the smell you know when you like, of, of the cakes of my mother when you open the oven there is a smell and it does you know it's not the same as the taste right mm -hmm. and but it smells like oh my god and it was the taste of the smell of the cakes oven and i was like what what is this cake is doing there so i was really it was really something and then i thought they did something with the rice I went to see if, you know, I lost myself in the temple. It's a big temple, but I found my way. I asked if they changed the rice in my broken Japanese at that time. No, it was the same rice since, you know, centuries, I imagine. Mm -hmm. So from this and then from, so that's where the click came into me. I was like, okay, if it's not the rice who had changed, who had, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and then pretty quickly, it was obvious that, the, the fact that I had changed enough for the taste of the rice to change depended on the condition that I was sitting in or that I was moving or what I was doing. So that's how I realized that our, our practices um, could uh, really be uh, the container. So it's not the practices in my sense that are the trans, well, maybe it's the same, that are transformative in themselves. It's the practices we create a space from which an activation of our, or our, um, I don't want to say real self because we're always real, but uh, a non separated self merge, like poof, activate. So that, that's why I became passionate. So from, from that, I, 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 I became passionate more specifically about the, um, the, what we call the Tenzo. The, the Tenzo is both the name of the cook, uh, the, of the cook, but in, in, in a sense, like the one who we say, we say is the activator of the elements, the, the one who created the container of the kitchen, which also we have an echo in the old temple and, you know, create the, how we, 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 we cook in teams. Uh, so the whole thing is not just the, the, the cooking, you know, the groceries, uh, everything. And um, because uh, even though I, I still believe that it's the fact that we were sitting a lot, that there was this chanting, that there were the bell, which created this um, activation of a different uh, taste. 
uh, it was also, uh, I, I, I saw also that in the way they would um, uh, uh, compose the menu, they, they, they had a, a, a specific um, 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 intention to protect the, 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 the space, I would say, through kind of a neutral and quite balanced, but kind, kind of neutral um, uh, system. So, so anyway, I decided to study this, this path of the tenzo, both in how it practice in general, and both in how they compose the, the menu. So I traveled uh, um, in a lot of temples and, um, and then quickly my passion was like, you know, this is okay, this is a practice, most of the time it's expressed in a monastic environment, but the essence is, is uh, you know, what we call now systemic or, uh, uh, you know, deep ecology, or um, we just have to um, reconciliate, I would say, our concept of uh, how the world is, is working, like it's in deep ecology and systemic, and uh, had the, the movement of practices that um, uh, uh, temples I really understand very well because it's the practices mostly to, to make it to make it to the core of it it's it's the movement uh, it's really the you know like um, um, the 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 uh, the name of of uh, shojin which is the name of the of the practice of the food is actually the 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 kanji of um, moving of ali of, of going mm. so it's uh, practices it it means actually just the movement and the movement uh, together and and from that I, I i really feel like wow that just shouldn't stay in the in the temples and also i'm i'm pretty sure because then at that point i had some 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 years of practices i i i was convinced and i'm still convinced that it's possible to keep the universal uh, truth of this uh, monastic frame, but kind of, uh, uh, and not to say that it's not good to, to have monastic frame, it's really important and for just to keep the tradition and the scriptures and, and for, for a lot of reason, but the practice is the practice and the, or the practices are the practices and this is totally possible in my sense to, to put the universal core of the movement of going together uh, in a secular way. So I, I, mm. I, I really got uh, passionate about that. And also, so that's why I came to, when I came to, 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 to life itself, um, I, I just proposed that, oh, I, I would be really interesting to focus on the movement of the daily practices, which is cooking, cleaning, sitting, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and that. And, and just to finish specifically about the food practices, I was even more passionate about it because this is really pragmatic. And I felt that it was more easy to, to bridge monastic practices to secular world through food, because then you can skip a little bit the... Um, the Buddhist semantic or the, the, the Buddhist exotism, because that, that's the problem with all those kind of practices. We put a filter on, on uh, you know, because like with wisdom traditions, uh, you know, but when it's, I am, I'm the first to be really respectful or all the, all the, not the, yeah, uh, not the first, but like um, I'm, 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 I'm really uh, passionate about and, and respectful of the lineage, but I can see also sometimes that it creates, um, it creates a, a level of um, a goal for people when you say like, okay, we will meditate or we will, you know, do uh, like, uh, I don't know, monks or those practices are coming from monastics, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's not about that, you know, like, uh, we're all human and they just find a way. Uh, to to activate uh, our real uh, joy and real uh, movement, you know, and and I'm I'm pretty sure we can do that um, without being monastic. Yeah, it's really fascinating because I really sort of resonate with what you're saying about the pragmatism of the practices, um, and then also from taking it from. The monastic lineage or from the monasteries where you worked and then applying it in a sort of secular setting because in my experience of it the practices do allow you to really engage with this sort of 
authentic self almost this sort of like latent happiness or joy or excitement just for like the world and for the food you're eating and for the people around you and it's really from my experience it might have come from buddhism but it's not you can so get engaged with it as a non-buddhist like i've grew up Christian I went to Plum Village on Easter Sunday and there was a really great Dharma talk about Christianity and it was just really lovely that it can all link together and it's not exclusive at all it's really inclusive and anyone can get involved yeah definitely and I would say like Buddhism in itself well I, it's difficult to say Buddhism because obviously with the year there is different not different Buddhism, but different way to express the, 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 the practice. But I believe to the core, it's a deconstruction of self, you know? So we're coming back to the, and that's it. And from, if you take it from that perspective, which is pretty accurate, I think, uh, it, of course it's inclusive, you know? You know, like in the, in the philosophy of Buddhism is definitely, I would say, uh, uh, just the, the deconstruction of, um, of self. However, it, it is true, and I think that's what we are bumping in the social uh, transformation change um, desire. Um, it is true that monastic find the easy way, I would say, because uh, they, uh, uh, you know, as, as human, they, 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 they understood that to transform oneself, we need, as I said at the, at the beginning, to kind of go towards our own resistance. And so, you put that a monastic and no choice, no choice at all. You know, like you don't, no negotiation. So you go really through the, the, the path of like, okay, like no, no, no more me. When you, when you, you can't do a copy and paste in the, in the secular because you, you, you have to deal. And I think this is the, 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 the path that this is why uh, this, this exploration of social transformation change through inner uh, awakening is so uh, important and at the same time so challenging because you can't just say to people, just, you know, shut up and I don't care about your feelings and you will, if you want to be transferred, you will do this and this and this. Uh, you have to integrate uh, a lot of parameters. First, the resistance and the legitimacy of the resistance. And I don't see why I wouldn't do it. You know, to a certain extreme, you have to be flexible. You have to be creative. You have to, uh, uh, I would say, uh, displace the one authority, let's say it would, would be the, the master or the people in charge, in a, you know, a benevolent uh, leadership, which at one point has to be shared. So we have a lot of parameter. However, uh, even if it's not uh, the same situation, I think there is one thing uh, which is common to the two in the necessary ingredients to have the uh, transformation happening. And I don't think it's straightened enough in the uh, places that we open is the engagement. The engagement that we come to monasteries, we follow the rules. When we come to a transformational hub, let's say, we agree that we're on time at the collective practices. Mm -hmm. Like the level are totally different. The engagement is the same. Mm. And, and you know what I mean? And, and okay, you will, monks will do it all day long, blah, blah. We do it one hour and 30 minutes, and, and, but we're there. We're fully there. Yeah, it's definitely something that I found in the hubs. And it's kind of what you're saying about month long and it's and it's up and down because it's so many skills living in this sort of community and they develop and it's skills sort of, it's respect for each other, which is so easy to say, but it's putting it into practice. It's sort of turning up on time. It's doing all these collective practices. It's listening to each other. It's coming to group agreements and I remember there were tensions but the great thing about the the great thing about the residencies and how that they are done practically is it's this space for really great communication and development that we sit down and we surface any tensions which you just don't do in real life I don't know about you but in, in real life life that's the norm 
seemingly like tensions don't get raised and issues go unsolved and um things fester whereas when you live in a community and you're so close to each other you can't really let things get let things fester because they'll explode and they just won't work so even within a month you have this opportunity to live as a group and stumble across anything which isn't working any issues and air those tensions and talk about them often mediated I think that's something that's really great is sort of developing these skills and sort of facilitation and mediation and having really effective communication with people and then learning and it's just such a learning space and it's I think for me it was in that sort of process that I saw real transformation in myself and then other people because I feel like it's easy to throw around the word transformation and maybe that's something we can actually dig into like this podcast series is called exploring social transformation like it means a lot of things it is so broad but one aspect when you're living the hub is just transformation in your skills going from an individual to someone that's part of this machine part of this group that really needs to sort of come together and blend together in order to function and I think that's yeah one of the cool things to see is this this development yeah definitely like the the it's all about you're totally right it's all about the I would say the we understand what like, like we're interdependent but it's another uh, it's another thing to really feel it and uh also to uh, accept that um, Philip feeling it will will go first through the uh, discomfort of uh, reactivities and uh, you know but this is one part of our uh, uh, relative uh, uh, reality of uh, interdependence you know we we're we're physically separate so we will you know have a reactivity uh, even though we know that in the absolute, which is still there, it's not something out there, it's still there, but we don't always feel it, see it, uh, we are interdependent. And uh, uh, it's in, really interesting that, the, yeah, you, 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 said it, you said it, like, it's really interesting, the practices about the time, uh, about also the engagement of each people who are, you know, uh, different every day. And, um, and sometimes it can create uh, reactivities. And um, as you said, you know, like we, 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 we have uh, spaces, of course, uh, to uh, uh, seek, I would say, in, in the trouble. And for me, the, the interesting point, apart the fact that we, we don't uh, hate each other, which is already <laughs> a path, which is uh, very important, we, we go to the core of um, the, the, the collective trouble. So if I, at least for me, like every time I bump in um, attention with somebody and then I go through mediation and talk and really uh, open, open, open talk, open heart to talk, I have the, the feeling that I'm resolving also the, the trouble of the world because it's about the same reactivities, you know, that countries got to each other, like mm -hmm. basically the other is a bad guy and I'm the good one, you know, we could summarize that's it. And in the interpersonal relationship, oh, she shouldn't have done that. Like I, I did the right way, you know, she should understand like, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting like to, to it's, a, it's another part of deconstruction, deconstructing the, the opinion and the um, basically uh, um, um, harmonize our, ourselves. The, the other things that I wanted to say about the, um, the practices is really interesting because actually it's, it's time where you don't act under your name, but you act under a function. And the space that you were talking about, which can create, you know, a space of joy of just doing together, I think it's coming from that. Like when you're stepping in a kitchen and you're either the cook chief or the chopper or the person in charge of the dessert or in the cleaning, you're, you have the task for this morning to broom the, the garden uh, and only that and you will just um, honor the, this function 
it's not anymore Valérie Duvauchel who thinks that, who, who, who is coming from there, who would like to go there. You know, it's like a person who is bring, grooming the garden and you have next to you a person who is uh, uh, cleaning, I don't know, a, a, a table. And it's not uh, this or this, it's a person who is cleaning the table. Or at least, of course, we recognize each other and we never forget who we are completely. But in the, again, in the movement of function, and it's, it's, it's the important thing, and that's the main point of uh, also the, the, the practices, the shugyo in, in the Zen temple, it's about functions which are harmonized together. And in the, I would say, deep persona of the role that we do for the time being of the practice, there is a space. There, there is space. So it's all about space, basically, because when we are too much, let's say you, you're doing, you know, and sometimes I have to be a, a little bit uh, pushing uh, and uh, like, you know, when you come and you have your podcast and because, oh, but I can chop if I listen to my podcast. Yeah, sure, but you don't you 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 don't let yourself the opportunity to step in uh, in interbeing basically. The, the interbeing is a space, you know, like we and feel part of this space. And like there is, you know, we we were often in the kitchen uh, together <laughs> with Carl, and like it, every day we were, you know, just doing that, and we felt it, you know, like it's not something uh, we imagine. It's it's really there, you know. Mm what you're talking about space and interbeing is so central in my opinion to what it is that we do at the life itself hub that was sort of really what was central to my experience of it and because of the contrast with my life outside of the brow drag hub it is this space and focus on being in that space and being with each other and being in that moment and slowing down and it's really wonderful <laughs> it's really great and I mean it's clearly something the value of that is clearly recognized world over um we talk a lot about mindfulness in the hub we go to Plum Village sometimes um and it's just all comes back to the importance of really being and feeling and appreciate the moment, the place that we're in um, is really special. This sense of sort of slowing down and appreciating being the moment. And yeah, like I think it's just so often and even I've slipped back into it since I've been back in Scotland, like walking somewhere, I've got a podcast in, oh, I'm cooking, I'll listen to some music just actually focusing your attention on the one thing that you're doing and appreciating that it is really transformative like I like I felt very different like when I came back to Scotland after being in France everything felt so fast and I felt like this sort of like inner stillness that I developed being slightly like disruptive but I was like no hold on to it um because it's really different and I think it's really special um yeah 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 totally i i i would say like the 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 the, the true in 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 doing just what we do basically is 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 working um uh per, also personally and in collective we we uh, we often use and you use it the term focus I, I i'm not totally agree but i understand of course what you mean but rather than focus and concentrate, for me, it's like when, when I cook I, I, or when I chop something, it's not that I focus on the apple. I'm, I would say like uh, as an image, it's almost the contrary. It's like because I don't add something in the space which comes from my mind or which comes from, you know, like, oh, by the way, I have to do that. Or like, oh, why, you know, like it's, it's usually the past of the future which come mm -hmm. in, in why, what we are doing. So when I just, so from, focus for me, yeah, I just want to deepen what focus could mm -hmm. mean. Focus is not like just um, meaning to concentrate and which would, which could mean concentrate and to avoid all what's around. On the contrary, it's like not putting myself in the way of all what can come 
in when I'm cooking and when I'm cleaning. And then there is this whole world uh, that can come to me, you know, when, when then you hear the bird, then you feel the breathe, then somebody is passing and you see the smile or the tears. And uh, so you start to be actually uh, in attention with all coming a space that you have been freed from yourself. From your little self, and uh, and collectively, I would say there is um, a really um, also important um, add value <laughs> to 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 even sit or like you were talking about those vulnerable space or mediation space or um, uh, yeah, especially during those space when we talk and when we share, but. Because we have the space where we cook and clean and we can just, you know, feel this um, interbeingness or connection that, that, that we have, which kind of a lift, lift our heart. When we go in the space more of vulnerability, we can, I would say, we, I, I, we can share with um, more uh, trust. Uh, more um, less fear, I would say, because you know the collective body we, we feel it through all those practices, and when we share, uh, I, I guess that's where we 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 can share also our suffering, and I would say that the the not the main point, uh, but maybe the main point of the practices and this moving together movement, it's opening space to allow us also to show all our humanity. And uh, I feel those spaces are not existing in the society. And it's also could be one explanation of the denial because we don't dare open the space individually. And it's, I think we're right. Uh, but to, to open it collectively, the interesting mechanism of it is like once you share, let's say, oh, I'm tense, or like, I'm, I'm so afraid for my children with the future. Once you share, like with open art in a group and you're seen with that, instantly you're stepping in joy. And I don't know how it works. Huh? I don't know how it works, but that's, that's the reality of our true humanity. Once we open our heart and we're seen. So that's why all these you know, it's kind of an ecosystem in itself, you know, like I think Jen Verweck is talking about ecology of practices. It's really an ecology because once you have, I would say different uh, practices to activate in the same space, but through, um, yeah, through, yeah, through different angle or, uh, or which will activate like more sense of belonging, more sense of joy, more, and, and, and then you can, go for the real space, <laughs> which is like our really uh, deep humanity. Uh, e even in contemplative uh, uh, meditation, there is different, it's, it's always to, to bottom line to, to touch the, this space that we don't dare open individually. And, and sometimes we do singing, it's like, okay, it's a contemplative space which will activate joy, but like, for example, Zazen can be everything, you know, there is no, but it, it's basically opening ourselves to what comes. And when we open ourselves to what comes, because we're not used to that, of course, and because we are porous, thank God to us, that's where humanity is, because we are porous to the state of the world, even we don't realize it, that's where we realize it. That was is so important, because actually when we are opening those uh, space, we realize that we are already transformed. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's the key point of those, of those things, like to really activate this space that we realize how much we care for the world, how much we care for each other. And the more we will open those spaces, the more we will activate the, them through this container. The hub is just that for me. It's a container for those kind of space. And then each practice our activation of, of, of this space. And the more we will activate this space, the more we will uh, be hope and enjoy to just be human and, and, and willing to do even more to, because we care, just simple that, we care. Mm. And I think it's important when we talk about transformation, consider what we're transforming for, from or 
fundamentally why there's an, a need for it. So I think we, we, we touch on it when we talk about when we open our, ourselves up, we're opening up to caring. But what is the alternative? Why is it important that we're putting this work in sort of within the context of our wider world society? Yeah, I uh, I have to say I'm I'm not I know it's so I'm using the semantic that that everybody is using. I I don't I don't believe in transformation. I I prefer activation. I believe we don't have anything to transform. Yet we have a conditioning like what we were saying of believing that we will be happy uh, if we do that, we will be good if we follow the law or if we hit this way. We have a lot of um, um you know postulate or like uh, moral ethic uh and uh, we we uh when for me when i hear the word transformation it comes from uh, ethic background you know i i am not yet what uh uh i am so i need to follow uh what well, i need to follow a law basically rules mm -hmm. ethics i believe that I like I like activation. I like activation of 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 a uh, free self, and um, and I think it's and it's another big things that it's difficult to understand. I think it's completely separated from the ethics of the moral and the moral. That's something that we are not used to because the uh, all the culture and it's again it's normal. It's like a, a, has been based on the law and. Uh, um, but as a concept, so basically I feel sometimes we, we take things reverse. I feel we are naturally compassionate people. We just have to open the space of our compassion. And then we, we don't need to know what is to be, uh, uh, to be a caring uh, uh, person. We don't need to have meetings to uh, know what, what this world needs to 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 needs from us we, we don't know to uh that, that that's my 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 perspective at, at least i feel it comes naturally as the as the as the consequence it's almost a mechanical you know it's kind of an adjustment we 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 ourselves i love like the the way uh, joanna messi is making a parallel of the uh, yeah, we could say transformational uh, path or activation path with uh, with the cells uh, in a, in a body, for example, and to like a, a, um, a, a cells is like um, don't don't think what she's uh, doing, but because she's receiving all the information, let's say there is a cold and it's coming from the nose, and uh, I don't know how it works, but like uh, another part of the body is like. Uh, uh, adjust. So it's a constant slow like homeostasy is a constant adjustment. And she's saying like, actually, if we do this parallel with human beings, actually, the systemic of, of human society of, of a, a society system is the same. So you know, you receive the information and we have the capacity, uh, we, we're like cells within a system to adjust, except that we don't receive anymore the information. Why? Because we uh, close ourselves from um, a, a, a perspective of, uh, I guess, of fear, and then the uh, all what we talk already that we don't, we don't, we, we see the world in a specific way, coming from the self, coming from a sense of separation. So we 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 build ourselves in closing in the actually uh, a skills that we have naturally, which is the natural compassion for all, uh, not even beings like the wind, the, 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 the self as us being part of. So all we have to do, and she was talking about that, explaining the denial, all we have to do is just opening those space of vulnerability of caring for people to realize that they have nothing to do than just uh, um, be who they are, caring people. And if they're sad, if they're stressed, if their uh, addict is most uh, of the time, and there is a um, 
eco psychology, you know, new uh, trends, which actually has been studying not just the family background in our addiction, but actually this repression of, of natural uh, compassion that we have because it would be too uh, difficult to um, to open. But it, when we're in a when we're in collective, we can open those space. So I would say to answer to your question, um, there is no way to go. We are already there. Mm. We just have to really sit completely in who we are in in every instant of the of the time. And it's true that uh, not uh, systematically uh, putting our little self in uh, this space will help will help us to constantly be uh, you know inter being uh, being with everything and from that state which we already have you know it and of course it's not it's never like we close it we open it we close it we open it it's it's not a it's not a state that like we stay and that's it it's done checked it's like it's a constant and the oscillation also is part of the of the movement so it's not something like this is good and this is bad this is really uh this is life you know the the, the heart is like buh, 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 buh. No, it's not like buh, 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 buh. and um and from 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 that you know we will adjust we are adjusting naturally we have new intuition we have new way of thinking we know uh, what's next for, for us and it could be bringing a, a part of tart uh, to our neighbor it can be just uh, being very uh, compassionate with ourselves and saying okay now I have to take one hour to go to the swimming pool it's it's a it's an intuition which is then accorded accorded to everything and then life itself but not from our perspective. So I, for me, this is transformation. So it's not a state, it's an instant activation of uh, being with. The second, the, and, and through that, we can see that it, the, 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 the concept of self is definitely uh, 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 can't exist because when you do that, it's really letting the other, of course, the other beings, but I would say all the others uh, within you constantly and being kind of a, of a bowl, you know, like a constant like a bowl we receive and which will cook. And, uh, and, and so I would say that the transformational part, and I think also uh, this is really uh, a, a challenge for us, uh, culturally speaking, uh, is to uh, shift from self-development to collective development. So, because again, I think it's culturally, it's like, it's, um, it's a cycle and it was fantastic that, you know, mindfulness is, is going everywhere and uh, uh, everybody, but, but again, every system carries in itself its, its, uh, <laughs> its uh, limits. Uh, you know, mindfulness is also to be, uh, uh, more efficient uh, to work more or to mm. be better and it can it has a counterpart where we can nourish our ego oh yeah i meditate uh, three mm. hours a day i'm like wow i went so far like i transformed myself so much no you were like that you know like everybody i mean is like that it's our natural state we're just activated so so to do to to bring back the mindfulness and by the way, you know, mindfulness. There is it's it's kind of um, it's kind of um, I would say a bag, a bag, a, a term which is a bag where you could put a different uh, explanation of the etymology that it's coming from. But one of them is samadhi, and the samadhi is basically this interbeingness, and 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 samadhi literally this etymology is is moving together. It's not, it's not uh, free liberation for you. It's like all together, uh, um, in interacting all together, meaning in, in meditation, you know, in sitting. But of course, it's a, it's a, it's a posture in, in, in life. So I guess the, the, the coming back to the practice and to the hub, it's also 
uh, shifting from you're not coming here to transform yourself. You you're coming here to to maybe completely collapse or to be completely energized, whatever the whatever the life will will bring to you for the moment that you are here. But definitely, this is a collective experience, and I feel that we are in a time uh, that we we need to shift uh, the transformation from self-development to collective uh, development still talking about inner development but collectively together mm. oh wow that was um really yeah some really incredible insights there it's really got me thinking i just want to maybe pick up on a couple of things especially and just maybe kind of reiterate what you're saying um I love this idea. I think you were saying Joanna Macy with the idea of kind of considering it in the context of like cells and bodies. So kind of what I'm hearing maybe is that by not really engaging with our whole humanity and just by being so fast, not taking the time or space to sit and contemplate and really sort of sit with our authentic selves, we're almost sort of kind of blocking the messages like might happen in a body like these messages are being blocked so any lessons that our humanity our authentic selves are wanting to tell us about our lives the way we're living our lives and the world around us are being blocked because we're not sitting and contemplating we're just things are moving too fast and by engaging in these practices by contemplation by really like listening to our ourselves we can activate this sort of authentic self this humanity this sort of love and care and joy and perhaps it's through this self-activation that we can gain collective social transformation because by activating our humanity we're perhaps transforming the way we engage with one another the way we speak with one another the way we understand each other and through that then we can transform around us so by activating ourselves we can be agents of change within wider society is that, is that yeah right? the, absolutely absolutely and then the, the to, to complete the analogy of uh, joanna missy and the reality because she was making a parallel in her phd of the co, co, co Co-production, uh, co-production, condition, condition, co-production um, phenomenon that creates our reality from the Buddhist perspective and the uh, general uh, living theory, theory general des êtres vivants, uh, living beings, uh, general theory, uh, with you know the self things and um, exactly that's what you're you're doing. So continuing what you're saying, mm -hmm. coming back to the cells. It's only when we are receiving, yes, we could call that the message, the intuition, that you know, the activation of the uh, the uh, naturally we know what 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 what's need to be done that we we can do it. And reversely, when we shut down from this um, intuition, from this true 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 self, we know what to do. That's where the disease is coming. So actually, in the body, when the cells can't receive, let's say, the information that a uh, cold is coming or like, uh, like it happens where, you know, that people have got problem with uh, sensibility and, and then they put their, 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 their harm in, um, in, a, in a fire and they don't feel anything. So basically what it means, and, and then they will burn and they will destroy them. Why? Because there is something which blocks the information that actually another part of the body said, oh, no, 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 Boop! danger, and we take that. So that's exactly what's happening. So exactly when we're opening ourselves to life itself, we have, we're channeling, basically. We're channeling uh, what we are in the broader sense. And when we are not, we're just becoming sick people. And the, the, the beauty and the difficulty of, of, of our stage is for me really to realize how much I am suffering how much I am, I am sick, I am conditioned, I'm reactive, I am, you know, um, this little, um, you know, monster um, uh, being. And at the same time, this fantastic, compassionate, joyful, 
so powerful, like caring people. It's 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 attached, and I think also, and maybe I will finish on that. The 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 thing that I um, we have to be careful when we are talking about transformative change is. We, you know, we're conditioned by the goal objective. And the, mm. the, the, so even when we're talking about concepts that uh, deconstruct that, we can't help saying, and if we do that, we will go there. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, that's, it's, 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 we, that's it. We're, we're so conditioned in this linear thing. So just to, to have the awareness that most probably we won't. Mm. Most probably we won't, or we don't know. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, but we don't know. And also, this is a space in itself, because you know, you know as much as me that in activism or in, in we say in bodhisattva world or in um, all people who care, basically, uh, there is uh, uh, insidious uh, and very. Um, uh, disguised, um, uh, toxic, I would say, or, or maybe not toxic, well, it could be toxic, but at least counterproductive thing that put us in, and, and I'm the first, you know, I constantly have to balance and to remember that, oh, yes, I feel this is what I should do, and I have to do it, and I have to do it, because if I do that, you know, like, of course, it will, you know, and to constantly come back to the space of Maybe all I have to do is to sit. Um, when I say sit, is not just physically sit, but mm -hmm. uh, stay uh, within the this activation that I see. And maybe it's also the little me which coming back and like constantly bring bring space and and humility. I think it's a um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a good one. And the not knowing. Like basically, like again, coming back to Jana Missy, like uh, one journalist once asked her, and you know, she was talking about like she has a whole protocol to help us to open activate those um, uh, caring um, and, and um, spaces, and before that, vulnerable spaces, honoring the suffering spaces, and moving forward. And as you beautifully express it, then we can act in the world. And blah, 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 blah. and a journalist said, Yeah, but actually, you don't know. And mm. she said, yeah, you're right. We don't know. But all I know is that we will have lived while mm. we we're doing that. And that's, that's all it is. We just need to live, you know, but really live, really being engaged in, in our own life. Mm. Wow. OK, I think that's just the perfect way to end. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think we're going to leave right here because that was really beautiful and so so true and like what a message to take away so thank you so much Valerie I feel like this has been such a great conversation like it's really got me thinking about my experiences almost in a new light and just giving me other things to sort of sit with and contemplate and yeah so really special so thank you so much for chatting today has been really great I don't know if you've got any last words yeah but... yeah I mean the same you know I've, I'm, I'm, I'm I, again those conversations are so important because I, I love also like okay we were uh, uh, sometimes together in in the hub and I and I love the I love your engagement and I love your your freshness you know and your curiosity and you know I mentioned engagement but curiosity is definitely another big one and it's so uh you know, just the fact that that you receive what I say and I receive what you're saying is like I don't know how you feel, but I, wow, I feel like my, there is a space in my heart, and like I know that I will be joyful. It's that simple, you know, just like sharing honestly what we what we think, where are we engage in the world, listening to each other. Yeah. So thank you, thanking you for 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 this. Beautiful moment. Thank you. Hi, special. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Valerie. Um, yeah, it's been great. Okay. okay, so I talk to you soon. <laughs>